Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. Happy New Year. I can't believe it's already the 3rd of January. Shout out to everybody who came to the Twin Cities this past weekend for my New Year's Eve gala. I had such a good time. It's like this whole weekend was such a whirlwind. I will definitely do a live stream probably at the end of this week. I'm still recovering. Like My voice has been gone for the past two days. Um, I'm exhausted, low key, but you know, the news does not stop. So I want to come on here and talk about the Cat Williams situation. If you guys do not know, Cat Williams went on Club Shay Shay. And I really like um, Club Shay Shay. I watch it all the time. And once again, Cat Williams is keeping it real. Cat Williams is literally, like I've told you, of truth. Cat Williams may be a little man, but he does not suffer from little man syndrome because he's definitely standing on business, okay? Cat Williams is not playing. He's going in on Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley. He woke up this new year and he chose violence. I choose violence. And, you know, he even said in this conversation with Shannon Sharp and people who are liars will be exposed for lying and trying to write him out of history. This was a very, very interesting interview. And one of the things that bothered Cat Williams is that he accused Cedric the Entertainer of stealing his joke. Um, back in 1998, and I remember this because this was like back in high school, um, back in the day on BET Comic View, he used to go by Cat in the Hat. And he was kind of like a pimp. And I remember watching this on television back in the day where he was basically, you know, trying to parallel park this huge Cadillac. And it was a really, really funny skit. And then I remember a few years later when the Kings of Comedy, um, we went to go watch it at the theater back in like 2002. Cedric the Entertainer did a similar joke, but he did it about a spaceship. And so Cedric is trying to act like, oh, that's not what happened. This is his joke. And Cat Williams is calling him out about it. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip really quick. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up? He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke mm -hmm. and it's my last joke and it's my closing joke. Okay. 1998. I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy. You had your car radio up so loud that you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off. It looked like this. You flossing in a six shift converter. We grew up driving long cars. We would drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter. Nigga, we, nigga, we, we get us a cigarette, nigga, we get us, we be in a space shuttle, nigga, like it's a 72 deuce, nigga, we get us. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So after it went viral, this is what Cedric the Entertainer had to say in the shade room. He says, revisionist history, regardless of whatever Cat's opinion, my career cannot be reduced to one joke. Cat Williams claims is his. I've been in over 40 movies, my specials and my brand speaks volumes for I am. The people I have put on, including Cat in the Hat at the Gibson Amphitheater. 
Then he says, and all that tough talk is corny as fuck. I'm a grown ass man and none of that shit is going to go like you think. You do you and I got this over here. So that is what he had to say. So on top of that whole back and forth with Cedric the Entertainer, he also went in on Steve Harvey and Ricky Smiley as well. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this clip too. I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in? <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams, was gonna be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was gonna play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him? Why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Well, I didn't know he, he shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it at home? He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man you stole that all oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence. What a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was- Sir, no one, why no? He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he, what? Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never right. funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. Because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So, that he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know. I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore the way you you. I mean, we ain't even got. I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. 
The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm can't, not a movie can't, star. Can't, can't, can't. What? It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. You don't think Cedric's a good a, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, sir, I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to set the record straight. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. They, if you give the, a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because. All right. So you guys just saw that clip and. I've honestly, as long as I've been watching Club Shay Shay, I've never seen Shannon Sharp so speechless. Like, it's like he didn't even know what to say at certain parts. He just couldn't do nothing but look down at his cards. Cat Williams came with all the smoke, and he was keeping it real. I got a lot of chills just listening to what he was saying. You can tell, like, people, like I said before, that we're in the age of Aquarius, and people are tired of these fake-ass folks, fake industries. Like I've been saying forever, the veil is being lifted. And, you know, the people who spoke the truth are not rising and they're tired and they're going to keep speaking their truth. And I love the fact that Cat Williams just kept it real. And he was just basically saying, like, you know, he's been telling the truth for years and people wanted to dismiss him as crazy and say that he was on drugs and alcohol and everything else. But I remember him talking about those mansion parties. You know, he was one of the first celebrities to talk about that, you know, so... It feels good for him to finally be able to speak his truth and get things off his chest. This was an over two and a half hour interview, and I enjoyed every bit of it. So if you guys haven't watched it, definitely check it out. But Cat Williams did not come to play. So with that being said, Tea Sippers, I want to know y'all's opinion. Let me know your thoughts. This is the first official video of 2024. So make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Feel free to share the video. Make sure you guys hit the like button. And most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.